time opening. We have an eye, sort of a nostril, two teeth. Hmm. One of the teeth has a small cavity. Close call, folks, but I think we got here just in time. Presented by Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. This is Anatomy of a Movie. In-depth discussions and breakdowns of various movie titles. And now that you've seen the movie, let the dissection begin. And welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another Anatomy of a Movie. <laughs> Sorry, Anatomy of a Movie. I got tongue-tied there. <laughs> Uh, this week's dissection is This Is Where I Leave You, directed by Sean Levy and written by John Cropper. Jonathan, if you want to be more formal. I'm John Comerford, joined in the studio by Marissa Serafini. Hello, everyone. Dimitri Dimanpanos. I call him Johnny. There you go. <laughs> and <laughs> Chloe West. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, for those of you who are actually watching this and not just listening to it, you might see the Movie Talk Nation uh, signs all around, and that's because we are now part of the Movie Talk Nation network. Woo! Very happy Woo! to be part yeah. of that. We'll still have our shows on the uh, Anatomy of a Movie uh, Site Website, as well, yes. and uh, but we are very happy to be part of that. We're Movie Talk Nation. We talk movies. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into this. Is where I leave you. What were our original thoughts? Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I mean, I think everyone likes the fun family kooky dynamic, and like any uh, crazy family that that's somewhat similar but somewhat completely different from your own that's always fun to watch this reminded me of the film eulogy back in 2004 wow. which has a, an amazing cast you know Fonky jansen hank azario ray romano mm-hmm. it was a Rip Torn. yeah there there was a great that's a great dark comedy film about funeral and everyone's coming back together for a week and this really reminded me of this that film and but this had the nice fun emotional real family dynamics to it that i really did enjoy d-man uh i i found i thought this movie was a, i think it's a great example of how a good cast and in this case a good ensemble cast finding the right people elevate what to me was ultimately a highly mediocre overly melodramatic script mm-hmm. <clears throat> had it been anybody else and there were other people selected I don't think it would have worked as well. I mean, as I went through it, I was I was entertained. I, I laughed. I had to roll my eyes at a couple of things, and it seemed at parts that they were just throwing in the kitchen sink as far as throwing in dilemmas and problems and, mm. and whatnot. But ultimately, I found it charming and sweet. Uh, I, I thought that, uh, you know, I really love Jason Bateman. Um, Tina Fey was fantastic. And I really think uh, that ultimately, you know, it had its sweetness overcame... And, and its cast overcame whatever pitfalls I thought that the screenplay had. Cool. I agree with you totally. I think this cast really elevated the film. I really enjoyed it. I thought that they all worked so well together. It was almost like a dream cast for me mm. to see these specific actors be a family. It was really exciting. And that's really what made me want to see this film. Were these specific actors, why like why did they choose this film? Why did anytime I see Tina Fey in something she didn't write? I'm like, there's something about that. There's something about this film that I need to see it because if Tina Fey didn't write it, you know, she's, there's something about it that's going to make this film special. And I really enjoyed it. And I laughed and I cried. I I probably (laughs) cried at those moments that you thought were a little like cheesy, but uh, it really touched me. And I thought that everybody played everything so well and naturally nothing was pushed and even the great family moments. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. That's great. I did too, I have to say. And I, I didn't, uh, I think we, you know, the part you were talking about, Dimitri, was about throwing this in and throwing it. I just, at that, at some point, I went, of course, why not? Let's throw it all in. <laughs> well, well but, it, and that's, but again, <laughs> and the, but to I, me, that's I, I, not I, a positive. Like, it's like, oh, well, why not throw in lesbianism at this but, point? Like, <laughs> let's just have it come I up. Like, I, I, I liked it because just like, I, I just, at some point in the movie, I go, I don't know if they intended this as a farce, but that's how I kind of took it. I yeah. said, of course, yes, let's bring in the lesbians. Yeah, of, of course, course. why not? <laughs> why not? Like, you know, I it, think you needed it almost yeah. in this because. The, ever, so many things were so depressing, especially Jason <laughs> Bateman's story. That you're like, yeah. you almost needed those silly throw-ins Ridiculous, to be yeah, like, yeah. oh, ha ha ha, phew, I can mm-hmm. breathe again, like without just being sad. <laughs> sort of, but like to me, yeah. it's more episodic. Like if you had this 13 mm. episodes to go through, mm-hmm. then you watch it, and then it leads up to that, and you're like, oh, this was like an hour and 40 minutes. It was very brief, mm-hmm. and it, it's not like I, I thought things were cheesy. I just felt like. 
what other problem can we like throw in I this? Know. Like everybody it has. It was, like, that's what I said. I liked it because I'm just <clears> going. Okay, first of all, you have the the mother, the matriarch, the manipulative. First of all, I didn't know at the beginning you sound manipulative and controlling too much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then you realize, oh, of course, all these kids are going to be screwed up. She's right. a psychologist, so you know they all they anal- overanalyze anything, but glean no kind of insight. Right. And of course they're going to be all screwed up. So let's throw as much in there as we can. Oh, and they who's do. more screwed up than a psychologist kid? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. No, I, it you wasn't. I mean? And again, it wasn't. It just became almost too much. Like I see, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned eulogy, and eulogy. I thought was it was. I think it was an okay movie as, as such. It's hard to rein a lot in. Mm-hmm. And to me, when it comes to a family dramedy and it, and it tried to be a romantic comedy and it tried to you know and i think sean levy orchestrated everything mm-hmm. giving it tight but i always go back to parenthood mm-hmm. i mean the movie mm-hmm. parenthood yeah. to me really nails it on the head and getting it it has its melodrama it mm-hmm. has its comedy sometimes they're a tough act to, to balance not that sean levy didn't balance it i just felt in this particular thing it was and it was almost like cliche it's like oh mm-hmm. we've got to have the the bonding over getting high scene mm-hmm fun scene though yeah I, it's like i didn't mind it which was because also in eulogy it, again mm-hmm. it, you know it, i didn't ago. mind it mm-hmm. because i liked the cast i liked watching them and i ultimately had fun watching it even though it's a little bit cliche and we've seen it before i, I like the rabbi that they kept on call, oh calling my God. Bona, that right? character was so so funny, funny. and again because i laughed mm-hmm. <clears throat> it didn't make me angry that I found it to be overly melodramatic and or just, it didn't, you know, mm-hmm. the script was mediocre. The cast brought it to life in a way that I think nobody else really could have. I, th- I think what this film did really well for being a melodramatic and comedic film, it was their comedic timing. Mm-hmm. Uh, along, they had that perfect balance of drama and comedy. When something was really sad and we were, all, the mm-hmm. audience were tearing up, they'd throw one little thing to make us laughter in that moment. It was the constant balance of between light and funny and and then dark. And it, it was, again, goes back to the comedic time. We're like, yep, all right, mm-hmm. now we can laugh again. And then get it to dramatic and then we can laugh again. I mean, I was thinking, you know, to be a comedic actor, you know, I mean, because we already know certain people can handle comedy really well. But when you're looking at people that we've come to know and love, um, and in this movie we have Jason Bateman, we have Tina Fey, and they're able to cro- they're able to straddle that line. And you're right, the comedic timing, but yet we buy them in the dramatic moments as well. So when they're sitting on a rooftop, mm-hmm. there's a sweet mm-hmm. moments, but yet we can still chuckle at something that Tina Fey or Jason Bateman says. But it's they don't do it so it's over the top, like ah, uh, it's it's not farce mm-hmm. so to speak we buy them in their dramatic roles um but because of their comedic timing and their, their comedic actors they are able to pull off I, I think something that's very difficult for a person who may not be a comedic actor mm, interesting. you know <clears throat> so I, I and that's what i really liked about this movie cory stall i thought mm-hmm. was really good i think the other standout um was um adam driver yeah. Mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah <clears throat> he's Driver's amazing just... in girls uh, yeah. the HBO girls yeah and he just basically took everything he's great at and brought it to this film yeah. and yeah I loved him in it yeah. I thought Adam was great and Corey too yeah. I was like I mean we all know Corey now from House of Cards mm-hmm. I think that's and the strain that's mm-hmm. sort of like the great. biggest Midnight thing Midnight in Paris is yeah. anyway that was one of the yeah the and he just it. is like again playing someone mm-hmm. compl- a character that we don't we haven't seen him as mm-hmm. and just awesome. Somebody asked, I have a question about Corey Stahl, because mm-hmm. again, House of Cards, fantastic. Yeah. He's great. And I'm a huge fan of the show, The Strain. He has hair in The Strain. <laughs> is he hair? Like what? Can, He's like, bald. He is. Yeah. Okay, so that must be a wig or, or something, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, because yeah. I was just curious. As but to... that's pretty cool that he can, yeah. you know, put a wig on like that and he just transforms into something totally transforms yeah. and yeah. and i buy him and i started watching the strain and it's like wow he's such a good actor mm-hmm. and he was actually one of the reasons that um i wanted to go see this movie it's like of course mm-hmm. yeah, i gotta yeah. see it because i go i like this i think guy. that's mo- the reason why most people want to see this movie they look at the cast, the like, cast. Oh, this guy's and just them together like yeah. i mean tina fey and jason bateman i could see them in a movie together mm-hmm. but adding adam driver and Corey stall you're like Wait a sec, and they're all a family. And yeah. we're forgetting one person because th- this surprised me. Well, Jane Fonda, but another fa- a favorite of mine, Timothy Oliphant. 
Oh yeah, I was like, sure. yeah. I, when I saw his like, because I hadn't yeah. seen him in in any of the advertising, mm-hmm. and when I saw his name, I said, "Ah, oh, Timothy Oliphant's in this too." Mm-hmm. I said, "Oh, okay, you know, that's great." So yeah. it was. It was a good coming. It was a good put together of cast. Mm-hmm. So. Did you buy though that Corey Stahl's character was older than Jason Bateman's? Because that, uh, that was the only thing I didn't. When I look buy at this family, I, go, I don't believe any of them are related. I mean, if you just look at them, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't believe it for a second. But yeah. I go, eh, what is, and you have to forgive that. You just gotta get around. It's like, okay, who did mom cheat with uh, uh, to uh, produce that? Right. You know, but <laughs> because they don't look like family at all. I actually could buy like Tina Fey, Jason Bateman, Adam Driver. Mm-hmm. And then maybe Jane, I could see Jane Fonda mothering Corey Stahl, but mm-hmm. yeah, Corey Stahl thrown in there as the older brother. But was Corey just looks nothing like Jason. Nothing, looks nothing like, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. True. Like, well, I don't but, mind that. Yeah, whatever. I yeah. don't mind that because looking at real families and yeah. there are siblings that look nothing alike, but mm-hmm. they are blood relatives. You know, it's like that's just a real thing. And but I loved their dynamics together and mm-hmm. how they oh, yeah. their chemistry yeah. together was so on point that physical appearance just mm-hmm. was nothing. When when the first time that uh, Tina Fey's character is is bugging, uh, at, I'm sorry, what's his name? Jason's character, Judd. Okay, so and she's saying you have to tell him, you have to, and just <laughs> going relentless. Yeah, that's me and my sister, just bugging the crap. Would you stop? Shut up! You know that yeah. that was so brother sister. I think the me. fights in this film mm-hmm. made the film what it was. Like watching <laughs> the siblings fight, yeah. we're so real and great. Mm-hmm. And yeah, from the nagging type fights to the brother mm-hmm. brothers physical fighting yeah. and like how that was actually funny because they didn't know how to fight and just the crazy that this family. Yeah showed and showed so well and so naturally I thought is what made this movie so great except the, see, when the brothers all were coming to fist the cup so I was like really you don't <laughs> well, know how to fight yeah, I mean if it were me and my brothers that's it fist would have yeah. been flying uh. <laughs> you know but and it's funny the scene that you're talking about too uh, you know um, John Levy talks about he's, he talks about how he loved that scene because Again, it was because of Fee and Bate, Faye mm-hmm. and Bateman. Sure. And it was in the script, and they were going off... They, they, they were using the script, but mm-hmm. then they ended up going off script. He said they used the script, but they found this way of fighting with each other that was so brilliant, and it was so not scripted. Mm-hmm. I just let them go. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that scene is really funny, and it has a great payoff, and, yeah, it's a very funny scene. You can scene. tell it was definitely improv, because they went a lot... Probably a few beats too long, to the point where you can tell that they they went off script, but I didn't mind it because they're both of them. They're just great comedic actors, and if you watch like Thirty Rock and Tina Fey and her writing, and just how she is with comedy, you just keep going. And SNL in itself, you know, it's and it just, never it's improv, and it didn't overplay itself. And there yeah. was a great rhythm to it mm-hmm. as well to that scene. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. It was and uh, much like in my family, if you have a fight, the next minute you, you're your buddies again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the fights yeah. are it's family. So it's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's not yeah, what it was. was. Yeah. And, and it had a lot of those kind of good scenes in it. And, mm-hmm. and again, I think I just enjoyed walk, watching those people work together that it just made it easy to watch. So mm-hmm. I got wrapped up. Uh, oh, the other person that we're not talking about is um, Rose Byrne. Yes, who mm-hmm. was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was great too. And see, I like watching her in these kind of movies and a bridesmaids kind mm-hmm. of. I mean, she's. She too can handle comedy mm-hmm. and drama. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, very you know, very easy to watch. I I, I think she's very attractive, and mm-hmm. I love her. But she was she was so good in this movie. So that, good, yeah. and I loved the scene. I don't know if anyone else noticed this. It might be a girl thing where she had lipstick on her teeth the entire scene. No makeup person fixed it, but it was so that character mm-hmm. and so cute that she was wearing like bright pink lipstick and it was also all over her teeth I and did. she's still being cute and still, it was just, it just worked. And I'm really glad that they didn't edit it out mm-hmm. or try and find a scene where It'd be she, really interesting to find out if that was a choice by her saying, no, I want to do this. Or yeah. if they just missed it and said, eh, oops. Because it was so great. It was so perfect for that character mm-hmm. that I was like, I love that she has lipstick on her teeth. Well, I, I did, I did love Penny's character. The thing with uh, that character that kind of got me a little bit confused is mm-hmm. how they started her off. She was very fast paced, very awkward and mm-hmm. set that tone. And then she, every time we kept seeing her throughout the movie, she completely dropped that and became more of a normal person. 
And right. that's what lost it to me because I thought if you're going to have that weird, awkward, kooky, mm-hmm. funny, dysfunctional woman, then have that consistent. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they only had that the first encounter with her, and then she became more normal. the first encounter, you know, she's nervous. She's obviously like this guy for a while. And she said she'd been yeah. popping antidepressants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe she stopped. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. You know, could, who knows? But I agree. There, there, there was a little bit of lack of consistency. But they, for whatever reason, they made it work. But the, uh, what I wanted to talk about, because I think everybody here agrees that the acting was a, on point and everybody enjoyed it. So let's talk about the cast that they could have had. Yeah. Well, you know, this is so well interesting. it's interesting too because this movie had gone through many different yes. iterations. Yes. Uh, and being picked yeah, up and, and, and having been, been done. And Adam Shankman, actually, Rock of Ages and Hairspray, mm-hmm. oh, he was great. the first guy. I don't think the movie would have, might have worked as well, but he was the first director attached. Mm-hmm. And the only. The only mainstay, the only through line is actually Jason Bateman was yeah, attached. Yeah, still going to be in the league. Uh, but then they were going to have Jason Sudeikis, uh, Malin Ackerman, Zac Efron, and Leslie Mann were mm-hmm. supposed to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. And when the project fell into development hell, uh, even Shankman and Bateman dropped out. And mm-hmm. the project pretty much, that, that was done, but it paved the way for Levy. Mm-hmm. And when he came on board, it was just... Levy said the casting for this, he felt, was very easy because... He was very shocked as to how, how many people approached him to be, to wow. be in the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And plus, he had worked with Tina Fey before. And, you know, but people like, you know, he had approached like Tina Fey. Mm-hmm. But Bateman wanted to be back in the movie. He mm-hmm. wanted to be. And everybody was like, oh, this is a really great project. How do I want to yeah. be in the project? And so when he put together his family, mm-hmm. he said it was one of the easiest casting. He was very yeah. pleasantly surprised. So, but how different of a movie would it oh have been? Oh my gosh. It would be a Judd Apatow <clears throat> style yeah. comedy mm-hmm. with that first cast with Malin Ackerman and Zach Efron mm-hmm. and Leslie, Leslie. Mann and Jason Sudeikis. And then those fight scenes would have gone on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <And> it just, <laughs> the writing. <laughs> it just would have been so different. But it's also funny because the family's Jewish and I don't imagine any of those people. I mean, Leslie well, Mann, let's, let's use Jewish right. quotes. <laughs> right. True. True. That is true. I mean, yeah. they did have the great line of mm-hmm. mom. This is where we put our Christmas tree. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. I, I guess I like bought this mm-hmm. family as like them being like, okay, fine. This is something we have to do. Right. We get it. We get it. I don't know this, the old potential family. It the just, A team. I'll call them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're, they're yeah the A-team. They, it just, I'm, Shocked. Yeah, it would have been a different it would movie. Be like, I think completely so. different movie. And, and no offense to either I, one of them, I'm not sure they would have had the chemistry that we ended yeah. up getting. Not well, that they're knows? not good at. I know we we, we, we don't just, know that. We just don't know. But I'm, I agree. I think it would have been a different movie, and mm-hmm. I'm not sure it would have worked as well. Yeah, yeah I all. would love to see this cast do, do one scene. Yeah, it would have been. You know what I mean? Like but, with Adam yeah. Shigman directing it, maybe there's like a dance number in it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's such an amazing choreographer. But I, uh, I, I would just, I would, I would love to see like a little funny, funnier die. Mm-hmm. Oh, short interesting. Of, yeah. of them right. doing like one scene like just, these are the characters well maybe they they'll do played. the play just to see, I like this this scene where they're talking about how we're, we're sitting Shiva no we don't do that no can we, no, can we do it for three days and they're debating and having this <laughs> that was very funny rabbi too going, no no no, no you know, Shiva means seven you know? <laughs> that would, that'd be a fun this little scene this is negotiable <laughs> yeah I love it they tried to negotiate everything and I love that they all knew they were like no I've already gone through all the things and they're like yeah. oh okay we we trust that you've negotiated yeah, this yeah. <laughs> I love that aspect patterns yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was great so, so that would have been a totally different movie but interesting it would have been that, you a, know. yeah it just would have been a different feel i think uh one of the other things i thought i heard about uh from uh, jonathan tropper who uh, wrote the book of course and mm-hmm. then also wrote the screenplay is that uh, he had written the screenplay and then uh, one of the things that sean levy brought to it was that he wanted to bring a bunch of stuff back from the book and put it into uh, the script because uh, obviously often when you're uh, trying to develop a, a book into a movie you have to eliminate so much of it and according to Levy he eliminated too much he wanted mm. to which is very rare right. most directors want to keep cutting keep cutting right. and he wanted mm-hmm. to bring us up so that may have been one of the reasons why stuff that according to Dimitri when you know you were saying that so much was thrown in it might have been due to that because Sean That's wanted true. a bunch of stuff brought back in That's true I mean you never know I mean you know, I, I find this movie, uh, you know, as Topper, he didn't he didn't expect this book to be optioned 
And and I can I can almost understand that in today's day and age, mm-hmm. this isn't really the type of movies that a Warner Brothers is looking for. So it's even more That's surprisingly yeah. that that Warner and it, Brothers although it was got successful. Success. It wasn't a huge. No, it wasn't huge. But let's mm-hmm. when we so you talk can see about, why they wouldn't. And he was like, they picked this up, and he goes, yeah. it's not the kind of movies they make. Right. And and even Jason Bateman had even said he goes this sort of plays out like an independent movie. Like, mm-hmm. This isn't a big studio right. oh, yeah. type of a movie. And but you can see why all the actors <clears throat> want to do it because what role is there a bad role? They all yeah. have their moments. Right. They all have their little yeah. arc thing going on. That's and, what and I loved about this. Yeah, you is get, that every character you had a day full this, arc. Yeah. When, with big ensemble films like yeah. this, especially one where you have a main character. Jason Bateman mm-hmm. is definitely the lead. It's definitely mm-hmm. his story. Mm-hmm. But... Gosh, what I left the theater thinking was, wow, every Every, character had a full arc Mm -hmm. and they all were buttoned up pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not everybody got the happy ending they Mm -hmm. wanted. Like Tina Fey's character, I'm sure we all wanted her to stay, mm -hmm. leave her husband. We're like, come on, you can do Mm -hmm. it. But it was so it was so great how everyone had such a realistic full arc in an ensemble film, which I feel like is very hard. But I think we should credit you know, the screenwriter and mm-hmm. the fact that it was a book, you know, they they have their ways to be able to really give characters great endings. And I I, I left this movie being like, that's great. Because I love when uh, every character can go through their full arc and it ends, it makes sense, the ending. Yeah. I hate when things just... You're like that was a that was a cop out ending. They just threw that out there. Yeah, and, and, and it could have been too because I also have to credit directing and editing because mm-hmm. it was again the way Sean Levy reined everybody in. You know, we've got this got a ton of people. Mm-hmm. Each has again everybody has problems, mm-hmm. and I mean <laughs> like in that that that's plural. Yeah, sure. and so <laughs> how do you rein this in, and then how do you choose? Like, I'm going to keep something here, but I need a through line and mm-hmm. I want to make sure that everybody's buttoned up at the end in one way, shape or form. How do I do this within an hour and 42 yeah. minutes or whatever? And I thought he did a really good job in this because yeah, usually... Night of, the Muse- Night of the Museum helped him with all those characters. <laughs> well, but he said <laughs> that his, well, he says his commercial filmmaking mm-hmm. really helped uh, w- w- really helped with his patience mm-hmm. and being able mm-hmm. to map things out but he'd always been wanting to do a smaller kind of a movie mm-hmm. and he's been hoping to do this uh, apparently he read the book like five years ago mm-hmm. and he's been wanting to make this type of movie for a while so he finally got his you know his 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 dream come true and he did a good job and it's not just the main characters sure. with the story arcs it's the secondary characters too yeah. even with tracy and wade the the girlfriend connie burton she's amazing um in nashville she even had her arc at them. like they had nice clean endings to those characters mm-hmm. well and they had reasons for their exits sure and the, mm-hmm. and then even with wade we know he's he's the a-hole boss that slept with jason bateman's wife and but then he, at the end, had that realization. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I deserve to get my car flipped over. And he's like, I'm going to take this moment to reflect on my life. And he walks away. And then they had clean endings as yeah. well. And I mean, that's hard to balance in an in hour and 45 minute movie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Did anybody else just cringe a little inside when his car got flipped over? Like you wanted it to happen. But at the same yeah. time, you're like, I hope that oh, that please. wasn't a real like you're like oh god right. i i did because <laughs> especially we saw those guys minutes before being mm-hmm. big fans of him mm-hmm. his he's like hey that's the radio personality mm-hmm. and then to immediately switch like yeah but yeah, they heard what he was saying yeah, yeah. yeah they, they heard his car they heard what he was saying and they yeah. know what it yeah. shows about exactly. i think yeah. is yeah. what helps them to be like wait a sec what did he do mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean again to me it was like that that that's one of the things that just falls under coincidence they happen mm-hmm. and we all walking out but my favorite line in that is i got 43 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, what did he do? He goes, he slept with my wife. Keep it. <laughs> and then, see, I love that scene. It was, it was a, it was a funny scene, and then his car just happened to be parked right yeah. up there in front. And where else would he, he park? Yeah, so of narcissistic. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna park there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. you know, but again, it was a good. I just liked it. But the oh, audience wants it. got his $43. But here's the thing. The audience wants it. They, they, yeah, yes. I, mm-hmm. It's they completely, do. of yeah. course, coincidental. I, it's no. the most obnoxious I, card yeah. So there. it's like, well, yeah. Like, yeah. Give, give the audience it. Because they want sure. it. He's a schmuck. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't mind it. Yeah. Again, 
But I that's I, again when the cars are. Of course, it's, that's what I'm thinking. Of course, it's gonna be there. Why not? So you I didn't even I don't know why, but I didn't play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I this was in the trailer, and it's when Tina Fey, you know, mm. gives him a good left hook and mm. with her big old diamond ring, and she yells "princess cut," and yeah. you <laughs> know that like that is that style of comedy would have been in the first the A team cast. You sure, know, that would have been like so much more of that. But I'm glad they kept that little line in because there was something about that that you're like, go girl. Like, that was your one punch you threw all movie. See, like, and, and get I was, it. And I was thinking it was actually the only real punch that was thrown. Oh, yeah. After all the other guys was like, what? <laughs> but she threw the only punch. Which and, is great. And, and I was thinking. Uh, and by the way, the NFL hours. disregarded any knowledge of it. Oh, and they didn't see oh, the video. So <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but, and again, it goes to that, you know, the way she delivered the line. She goes, you're idiots, but you're my idiots, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And again, we've heard this line before, but it's just, it's Tina Fey delivering it as this character. You buy it. And I you do, go because on she's a great she's, big sister, even though absolutely. she wasn't big. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. Thought this when Adam a, had that moment when he says, you know, look, you're the I voice I hear. Moment. That yeah. was a good time. Was yeah, yeah. That was, was a, that was a tear moment for mm-hmm. me. That was that was one of the crying mm-hmm. moments because yeah. that was so great. And then they cut it, of course, with her him picking her up and going, Oh my god, you know, <laughs> yeah. so you Again, get to have it. Yeah. 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 So man, Again, that, the the emotional upheavals mm-hmm. is great. I thought that too, I thought they really did a really good job picking those moments because you have mm-hmm. to find them somewhere. I don't know if they're in the book because I didn't read it, but uh, this movie makes me want to read the book. But they did a really good job of finding the moments that uh, st- just the head thing at the end, and you know when you think it's just ridiculous, and the, Adam and uh, um, Jason are putting their foreheads together. Oh, and he goes, yeah. Are we doing this mm-hmm. ironically? You can believe that. If, we can say that if you want. <laughs> and the way Adam delivers his last line, where he says, "Okay, keep in touch," and he's just inside bawling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, that was a really well, runs off. good. The moment. movie had a good sincerity, mm-hmm. which again, with not the right cast, it mm-hmm. could have been into modeling it could have really gone the Mm -hmm. other way but the sincerity that was carried in this movie and the way that they interacted with one another and again i I do think it's the way that it was filmed because they actually did film it in a house yeah they filmed in a house Mm -hmm. they didn't have like green rooms that when they were in between takes it's like oh let's go up to the guest room and let's play uno Mm -hmm. or something so I think that helped with their camaraderie. Yeah, yeah, that helps them build and, out those And I out. really mm-hmm. felt that even after they said cut, they would be like, hey, what are you doing? Exactly. Let's go grab we'll a beer. just keep going on. Right. Keep going. Yeah. So I think that really helped. Mm-hmm. And so the sincerity didn't become too mushy. Mm. Yes, I uh, totally agree. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I, I think that's why <clears throat> this movie worked is because mm-hmm. it wasn't that mushy. It was mm-hmm. like immediately you have like a touching moment and mm-hmm. then either – it was like either a loving touching moment and comedy came after or like another thing was thrown in and right. you're like oh jeez man like yeah. well, Jason Bateman you're, she's pregnant now she's pregnant like, exactly. ah. of course yeah of course like, she's pregnant, pregnant. Like, it's, 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 Chloe brings up a very interesting point I want to discuss it because we think it worked although the critics are you know, very yes. mixed reviews yeah. getting 50 well 47 50 whatever it is 43 percent on Rotten Tomatoes there you go okay. and so you know, a lot of them are not liking it as much as we did or, or thinking it's way more melodramatic or modern they, that's how they're viewing it uh, obviously the audience is much different because they're seeing it about 71 cinema so. score is a b plus mm-hmm. mm, which is yeah. for this kind of a movie it's especially good. when you're looking at the mm-hmm. audience i mean we're not going for teenagers here no so you know b plus isn't isn't too bad right. and, and you know we can talk about good, actually look the total budget including p a is 50 mil mm-hmm. okay but the production budget's close it's to like 20. 20 it's like yeah. 19.8 so mm-hmm. 20 mil we'll round it right. up that's considering the cast that we yeah. have uh, Sean Levy has directed some mm-hmm. hundred million dollar movies. Yeah. He, you know, he's he's you know he's he's a commercial success. He's proven so for him to make a twenty million dollar movie, you get this cast together, mm-hmm. twenty million dollars. Yep. Uh, so you know they were frugal. They had a good, yeah, and, and but I couldn't it, tell. Again, the actors are going. Wait a minute. Uh, so it's pretty much one location. So that's it's an easy shoot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be with this cast. So that's going to be fun. Right. And I'm going to make some... Oh, yeah, I'm in. Because yeah. I get to deliver all these lines. My character has an arc. And I, I, what, what's the downside? Yeah, what's the oh, downside? Yeah. I got, there's no downside here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I was just thinking of another funny line. And again, it works because of, I think, Tina Fey and Jane Fonda. It's when she's <sighs> cuddling up with her. She yeah. goes, yeah. oh, these things are really comfortable. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I loved just... Jane Fonda in this. I, I loved, loved, great I loved Jane amazing. Fonda. And I think she just plays these types of characters mm-hmm. so well mm-hmm. and I think Tina as her daughter was so great because mm-hmm. 
Tina seems like her mom would be like that. Like the way she can just deliver funny lines. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mom, she has. If I should tip the, she told me to tip the nurse. Like, <laughs> you, she just is so good and like d- at digging at her mom, which uh-huh. I think is like might be hard for other people. Yeah. And it just, it totally works with yeah. those two. And and <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking like, I was trying to think of like who Jason Sudeikis would have played, right? Because you know, again, Jason Bateman, like Jason Sudeikis, it's gotta be I Adam, the, right? I, I, it couldn't be the older brother Corey. I mean, no, I it was know, either sorry. him or, or, or yeah, no, I don't no, know. Because I think Corey? Zac or Efron, Jay. I think Zac Efron would have been the younger brother. What? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. That would make sense. And I think Mullen Ackerman would have been Peggy, and then um, Leslie Mann would have been Tina Fey's character. Mm-hmm. See, I can yeah. see Leslie Mann as as Penny. Penny, sure. Sure. I can see instead I can see of the other That's well. true. Mel, Mel and be the sister. And, I might have believed. I, I might have believed Leslie is more of a daughter than. Jane just by looking at them. Well, because, I mean, Jason Sudeikis could have actually played Judd as well. I think so, too. To an extent, yeah, right? But, again, right. when I when I think about the Except scene... Jason with, was already... A- when I see the scene with Jason, but yeah. I don't know if he was Judd. I know he was yeah, always he, he, he was He's always, always even when with, with Shankman. Yeah, that's what uh, I was. So, that's my research that he was always a lead. Because I love that scene where you know he's like, oh, "Mom, just button." But yeah. yeah. she goes, "Oh, yeah. come on, you suck a lot." He goes, "No, Not <laughs> no." That, and no. I don't think Jason Sudeikis would have he would have been a lead. I look at Jason Sudeikis more like a Chevy Chase mm-hmm. which is not a bad thing that's a compliment mm-hmm. um, but depending I think depending on what movie you're talking about but let's go on not modern problems but like <laughs> vacation mm-hmm. but I think that the way Jason Bateman delivers a line he's got that underlying current of sarcasm yes. that I love love that and the way he's able to say mom come on button up mm-hmm. and that conversation too made me laugh and it was in the trailer but mm-hmm. I, I didn't mind seeing it again in the, in the full fledged movie and yeah it's good stuff I only saw it in the movie. Yeah. What? How much have they made so far? If, well, if the budget was about twenty million, how how are they doing? Bob to date, the total price? gross is around fifteen, sixteen mil. Um, the the and that's the world. The worldwide box office is around fifteen, sixteen mil. It's not. There isn't and it's much. It's not disparity. a specialty box office, right? They're no, in no, main they, ones. they were there. That's a wide release production. for Warner Brothers. Yeah. And I think again, this one will be one that'll grow, though. I think this isn't like I don't know it because it's, it's then... not getting great. Well, I don't know. I don't think it's getting great word of mouth at the moment. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting but, to see how it plays out this weekend. Sure, yeah, of course. you know, because be, I, be I think sign. if if memory serves, I I, I think this beat out. Um, the Liam Neeson movie Walk Amongst Walk the Night Tombstones. Night. I think mm-hmm. this came in a little bit higher. Well, the than nice that. thing is, there's nothing and, else out, out there like it, so right. it's not competing with anything yeah. in exactly. its category, so to speak. And so. I think the timing is perfect p- yeah. too, because it's right before you know yeah. the Oscar season is about to start, and it's that nice balance between comedy, which mm-hmm. we get a lot in the summer, and then mm-hmm. drama, which we get a lot in the fall. So it's the perfect time for this film. Yeah, right. I would have thought that just a little bit later would have been better, just because you know it, it's family. And you know, you, right. you family starts to happen. Like a Thanksgiving, start Thanksgiving time. Exactly. Movie. But it's not, you know, because there's a death. Maybe they went, yeah, let's not do it. Thanks. Yeah, but, but if you look at a release schedule yeah. in November, yeah, it's, it's, it's so packed. yeah, it's it going to be so bad. So that's Toronto, what I was thinking. October, yeah. maybe. I don't know if you guys have heard about after what happened at Toronto, Please. but all those films at Toronto mm-hmm. yeah. are getting Oscar buzz, and so it's like, yeah, and those will be getting mm-hmm. yeah. November releases. Oh, it it came out, I so. think, at the right time. I think I so think. too. Yeah. And so you know, but and Warner Brothers put in thirty mil, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at the very least thirty mil, mm-hmm. give or take, to to to, to advertise it. Yeah. Uh, and also they were behind it. Um, it's curious. I mean, I watch TV, but a lot of it's DVR. So I fast forward through mm-hmm. the commercials. Can anybody, has anybody watched live TV? And I mean, I don't know what they did for their second week television campaign. It's if they had one. They, I, I haven't seen a second week campaign Timothy where they was sort of Ellen. throw in. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Where they sort of throw in all the, you know, critics say this right. kind of things, mm-hmm. but um, I actually thought the trailer didn't do it justice. I sort of mm-hmm. think the trailer didn't bring in that like warm quality that mm-hmm. you get when you see it. It sort of tried to play up the comedy, you mm-hmm. know, to get you in there. Oh, this is going to be a funny ensemble cast. But I don't know. I wish I almost wish they would have made an indie type style trailer mm-hmm. uh, to go along with, you know, giving you the softer moments right next to the comedy mm-hmm. moments I think would have been nicer because in the trailer you know we get the Jane Fonda boob joke we get the left hook princess cut mm-hmm. you know the Tina Fey joke so you go into it I don't know it's it's seeming like a comedy but it's not you know laugh out loud stoner Judd Apatow style mm-hmm. comedy so I almost wish they would have done sort of the indie feel just to see you know mm-hmm. like where if that would have pulled 
people who really enjoy ensemble films. Yeah, and to for go see me, it. it was the trailer that I mean, number one, it was the cast. Yeah, you know, I saw that, these yeah. people, mm-hmm. and 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 for me, anyways, in the trailer, they gave Jason Bateman his little sarcasm. They gave Tina Fey. I saw Corey Stahl, and I'm like, hey, that's the House of Cards guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a cast, Jane Fonda. And, and for me, seeing the cast in what looked to be a funny movie that I that I had a feeling was going to be this family dramedy but mm-hmm. it looked like there was going to be comedy in it I was like oh this movie looks good and you know I expect I just didn't expect like oh okay so I loved how it opened too right. I mean because that's where it brought us to this is where I leave you mm-hmm. you know and that was that brought me right in uh, but then it was like hey I'm pregnant hey this is my girlfriend who's my therapist and she's older than me and I got a portion hey I can't have a baby and Oof. you know we're trying See, to work I, on this I and I'm the ex again, and I'm the ex-girlfriend to Jason the reason Bateman why all and, that worked for me is that it just, like, this is just a reflection of what's going on in our site yeah, with all the reality mm-hmm. TV I, 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 I thought he was making commentary on this is our, our uh, privileged life and these are our problems, which are ridiculous and not really problems. But yeah, in the in the absence of no other problems, these are our I problems. Agree. It was I think it only, worked for me. I thought it was yeah. commentary. I yeah. thought he was going. So of course, yeah, of course, he's going to have a, a mommy complex, and that's yeah. why he's got an older therapist that he's uh, sleeping with. Oh, that yeah. line when Jay Fonda yeah. brings that out, you're like, yeah, <laughs> like she's the perfect one to say this to of him. Yeah. So uh, that's why it worked for me because I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah they're not reality based television. But that's that's what America, that's what families are these days, especially middle class. That's ones. a sad comment. But it's true. But, yeah. It is. It is. I think it. I think I it was know. honest. The, like, and seriously, yeah, I don't know if it's popping Xanax. Honest. I mean, yeah. all of us. I mean, the, 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 oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I have a bunch of antidepressants. She uh, says it would later, be hard pressed. You find one family that has all of those situations oh, but I mean, easily, if you I but my point is find you that, it's family. A, it's that has all of those situations yeah. oh my, yeah with that many siblings oh yeah but my point Definitely. is that it's a reflection of what is in the zeitgeist right now yeah in family, every family has every family can relate to somebody in that family. That, yeah. That's Uncle Joey, or that's cousin Tim, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, that I think they're just archetypes for. I mean, that's what I think it is. That's I, why yeah. I was left. Of course, she's going to have a lesbian affair. Why not? Yeah. We've well, had everything I, else. At that point, yeah. I was. Why so, not have this? I, I, I mean, didn't like, take. Yeah. I didn't take it seriously. Like, uh, like this is. A, actually one family I, mean, I, right. I think it was just representative of everybody and why not throw all that crap in there because that's all we see yeah. anyway I thought I was just anyway go ahead I just want to talk about the little boy oh yes. <laughs> yeah I think yes. we need to bring him up yeah, I think he was the sweetest part of the film <laughs> and I I love Jason Bateman's line about him oh, how they sort strange. of wrapped it up and brought it in of like the only he, one who's happy. Yeah, he's the only one. So he's got to figure it out. He, he knows yeah. the answer to life. A big dump. It's just a really satisfying dump, and that's yeah. all you need. And, like, find me one adult who's happy. And, like, I yeah. just love I was like, line. oh, that little boy yeah. going to the bathroom, like, carrying his And it's so metaphorical because, you know, oh. everybody else's life is shit, and all this kid is just trying to have one little to them. And yeah. he goes out and then he goes out on the porch. Exactly. Yeah. See, <laughs> again, but the balance the between drama when mm-hmm. a dramatic scene happened and then you throw that little yes. joke in there. It's like, yep, it's funny again. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I do. I give that credit to Sean Levy. I mean, I think he, I think in this movie, like from everything that he's learned before yeah. and he's done before mm-hmm. to make this, you know, because he called this his personal movie in a sense. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think that's why he worked. There was almost a Ron Howard kind of mm-hmm. sensibility to yeah. this movie and that's why I I, I, I kept on di- I, I was thinking of parenthood mm-hmm. uh, because again you have all yeah. these different things going on and I want to speak to that because I uh, one of the things that I think what Chloe was mentioning is that there's an indie aspect to it. I don't know exactly sure. who said it, we but both. because it's a, it's, it's yeah. not it, well, not only market, but the film itself is not right. it's not as polished as mm-hmm. a Parenthood, which is much cleaner in its uh, structure and even in it, everything in its editing, even in its ending, mm-hmm. much cleaner and stuff. And and by my, and I liked it. I'm not saying any. I'm not right, right, disparaging right. it. I'm just saying it's cleaner. This one to me is a little bit messier and even in the end is there's some ambi- ambiguity because even he, he doesn't say I'm going to call you oh no six months later I mean there's all this kind of craziness and I thought the messiness of it was in again in speaking to what's happening right now that's why I, I, I liked that it wasn't completely all wrapped up in nice and stuff and, and I was thinking all... that they wouldn't make like I was happy that they were able to get this movie made and yeah. Warner Brothers did it but I was thinking of Parenthood going 
yeah, we're never going to get a Parenthood movie again. Because that's uh, not what Hollywood is making. No, that's not. They're not yeah. making yeah. it. So the mere fact that, that this that one did, literally yeah. got off the ground and yeah. was made, you know, to the shock of the writer, the director. Yeah. And Everybody's like, me, are they really going to let us make like, this? Yeah, they're going to make let us make this movie yeah. and we get to make this movie mm-hmm. and it's 20 mil. It's like... And it's not a Kickstarter. It, like, no. It's like, and, yeah. and, but back in the day, <laughs> a Parenthood movie, that would be, oh, you get Ron Howard, Steve Martin, you get this yeah. Rick Moranis. So it's like... Done. Yeah. We're going to make this movie because this is a good script. It's going to mm-hmm. be funny. And people went. Those aren't the movies that Hollywood is making today. Mm-hmm. So if if Parenthood were on the table today, uh, yeah, it probably, it probably it. wouldn't be made. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm happy that this movie was made. You know, and I maybe, wonder if people like Jason Bateman and, you know, Tina Fey helped to get it made. Oh, because, yeah. You know, sure. with them knowing the way mm-hmm. Hollywood makes right. movies. Well, it wouldn't have got made without them. I mean, oh, they, for yeah. sure. I agree. And I wonder if they were like, "Gosh, you know what? Mm. We haven't done a like a t- type of film like this in a while, no. you know." And you no. know, if we get attached and if we stick on, like they'll make it. And right. I, I, I sort of feel like that must have happened because how else would they? You yeah, know? and again, I even think because of say Bateman and Faye, like okay, so say you have Sudeikis mm-hmm. and Malin Ackerman. I don't. Mm-mm. I mean, it was going to yeah, go forward, yeah. but maybe they cut back. I mean, I think that Bateman and Faye have a little bit more clout. I Again, think so, too. No offense to those fine actors that I was talking about, mm-hmm. but I just think that they've well, they the have writer, the y- right. Yeah, Tina Faye's like writing, producing. Like she can, it's easier for them to open a movie with Bateman and Faye. Sure, That's sure. It. And, you know, and, and Levy, you know, he credits, he's like, you know, for a script like this to be made by a studio that is funny and sad and is not about a superhero and is not a <laughs> exactly. tentpole I mean there are a few yeah. actors who didn't chase this that's yeah. what I mean so that's, uh, I'm yeah, if I'm an actor that's uh, yeah get me in there and the hope for me for, uh, I don't mind the superhero movie no. I don't mind that but the hope that's, is I there's want, more of these too that's yes all. you can squeeze them in well, so that's why I want people to go so they'll right. make more of them because yeah. you know, you know bringing in 16 mil ain't enough yeah. Yeah. No, I know, I know. and it's back. not like a teen you know teen book fan craze well, and let's face it it's also an R isn't it oh it had to be I think because yeah. of the yeah. language and drugs and stuff like that so I mean yeah. going even that that makes it even more difficult right. for them to make their money back sure it's like jeez but it's nice to have a movie like this yeah. even you know it's R it's, it entertains mm-hmm. you know and again r- regardless of my misgivings yeah. like maybe you go ahead and you do something else but you can make dramedies you can make funny mm-hmm. movies Again, just look to what they used to do. Yeah, they were able to make them for a mass yeah, audience yeah. because, like, a Parenthood made a lot of money. Um, so you could make movies like this. And it doesn't wanna, have to but be. But they don't want to take the chance on it. That's all. Yeah, I understand. They don't see the money in it. I wonder too Can't if sell they it overseas. don't. Yeah, I wonder too if they don't make movies like this not only for overseas but because TV's so great now and most well, TV shows are these style. Yeah, but the reason you know? why TV's yeah. so great is those writers <laughs> can't make those movies so they went uh, yeah, they left and film they went and went to, to TV. Cuz that's what I'm wondering, you know, like if maybe yeah. it's because we want to see stuff like this on t- you know, we want to see it in episodes. Mm-hmm. I want to see I want to dive into all these characters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. over three, you know, I want each of them to have their own full episode and yeah. maybe that's I'm why. I'm different well, than that respectively cuz I go no no, I, I can only spend it 2 hours with them because <laughs> well, well, they're so ridiculous and there's so many problems commit. I go <laughs> No, because it's the same thing. It's like I, I can watch reality TV for a little bit because oh, okay. you can see the train wreck and have fun, but I don't like to stay in the train wreck. I'm done with the train yeah. wreck. But like, I, I definitely, to, to speak to that, you should definitely watch NBC's Parenthood because it's the mm-hmm. whole family yeah. dynamic. It's mm-hmm. just literally siblings and families. Every episode is just their story and how they just yeah, keep and I, and I can't you know, going. And Dak Shepard isn't that's such that's a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and again, though, I'll go back to like, you know, at the beginning of the, uh, at the beginning here, sure. I, I did say like, to me, this reminded me something that could have been played out episodically in 13. Mm-hmm. And like 13 episodes where each character, like you said, would have yeah. their <laughs> have own the, episode. Yeah, see the whole backstory. Have this, the <laughs> drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and, and that. again, That's the thing. Yeah. They already have that. And, and again, in a television show, you sort of kind of, you swallow it because, you know, it's an hour long. And okay, so this is, and then the next episode, they might focus on something else and pick up on the drama in the last one, but you're able to spread that out over 13, 15 episodes. And this one, you have an hour and 42 minutes. They threw in everything but the kitchen sink. Although I was a little bit surprised and I, and I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been upset. Like, okay, so we know that he was going to take the exit to Maine. Sure. Like when you mm-hmm. saw him in the car, yeah. and, and, and that you was knew fun. he was going to take the Porsche. Because they knew he was going to take the Maine earlier at the ice rink. <clears throat> but I, I thought yeah. he was going to stop by the ice rink and goes, 
Hop in the car. No, I'm Where are we going? No, no to, I know. Far too. Yeah, but he oh, said oh, too that's bad. going over yeah, the yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it would just be far too easy. <laughs> and, but here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, that was like Tina, that. you know, leaving her husband yeah. and going with the neighbor. Yeah, like, that guy was a jerk. Too, yeah, he was totally. You wanted her to do that, but it's yeah, almost, but there was no future with her. You know, well, that's the thing. Oh, that, so. There could have been, <laughs> but it's but nice. even even the guy with a brain injury realizes there's no future in it. That's the tragedy of it, which is why it was perfect. I love that thing. No, of course. We're not going to get together. No. Yeah. But I, I just sort of, I mean, I actually found that the, well, the, the chemistry between uh, Bateman and, and, and Rose there, I thought was even better than he and his wife, but they had more screen time together, of sure. course. But mm-hmm. I his wanted to see them. His wife also played a, Big bitch. Quinn. Uh, yeah. yeah. Quinn. You know when wanted Spencer. to be. Spencer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone was just like, no. Yeah. I mean, you met she her. She was great. When she, I mean, she was great. She was great. But she was she, great at the role. Mm-hmm. But you did not want Jason Bateman to be with her. No. <laughs> no he didn't. And I'm glad he didn't. Even though he didn't Penny's telling him, no, you, or, no, who is it? I think it was Tina was saying, you'll, you'll forgive her because you, mm-hmm. you know, that's what you do. And stuff. Yeah. It's easy. You, don't, you, you didn't at all ever think that he might. Get back together with her? Yeah. A little bit. There was one, there was mm-hmm. one moment when he went to the hospital after the mm-hmm. thing. I was like, oh boy. That's but then Dax Shepard came in and you were like, yes, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, one of my favorite lines was the doctor saying, both of you get out. Get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and good job. You got us kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> Just great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. I know. Of course he's going to take the thing to me. Right. And, and it makes some sense. Some sort of arc fun. Sure. So, you yeah. know. Sure. You know, and then, you know, the, the, the hopeless romantic is, is that the, the thing that I didn't get was the whole, I understand six months, he's mm-hmm. going to take, he's going to take yeah. care of his responsibility, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but in the same time, it doesn't mean that he can't, hey, I'm going to, you know, have, yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean Well, it's he, like an, an alcoholic. You, first, you get a plant, <laughs> then when you handle the plant, then you get a pet, and then when you handle the pet, then you can have it. So he's saying, I need to be alone for six months just to get my shit together. Sure. So yeah. Chloe's going to step out. She has an appointment. Thanks very much for joining Bye. us, Chloe. <laughs> We'll see you Thanks. later. So that that's the only thing I'm saying there is that yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought actually it's kind of brave for him. He's been he, his life was so uh, managed and safe sure. that to, the boxed. unsafe place is, is alone. Yeah, and that so I go well. That that's actually a good character beat. So I, I kind of enjoyed that part of it. So the other thing I wanted to talk to uh, we we haven't talked at all about the technical aspects. Mm-hmm. So let's go to editing because we kind of brushed. So I thought they edited what was what did you say an hour forty? Yeah, it's like an hour, hour and forty two forty three minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had no idea the length of the movie. So uh, for for me that was a good thing because usually I'm looking at my watch going okay why are we here forever so. I actually thought it was paced well. I didn't. Yeah, I think I so. so. I think too. the pacing was so on mm-hmm. on point, especially with so many characters that yeah. we were introduced to, and to ha- again going back to everyone coming full circle. Mm-hmm. I think the timing was very well balanced, and there was not one scene that I thought went on too long or too short. I, I agree, and and we've talked about this before that, <clears throat> especially in comedy, right. A lot of it outside of your actors mm-hmm. and actresses, a lot of it comes to editing. Yes. How long am I going to let something stay or how, am I yeah. going to cut it too short mm-hmm. so that the joke Find doesn't the have time to be, or am I going to let it go exactly. on so that they hit the funny moment mm-hmm. and then it just becomes boring. Right. Uh, so Dean Zimmerman did a really good job Very with the pacing. And again, I, n- I never felt that this movie and again, overstayed I, I'm its welcome. I'm going to go back to this because he was also not in the museum. You, you, you got to know that uh, that must have helped him. I mean, not that he needed it, but uh, <laughs> just the, uh, the carrying so much and finding the, the sweet spot and then getting out and moving on. Yeah, Because agreed. a lot of, you know, we, we've talked about Judd Apatow, whether or not you're a fan or not. Uh, I, the things We've that drive me crazy so about his movies is that you, you know you hit the sweet spot, move on. Now yeah. you're just driving me crazy, and it's yeah. annoying. We've talked about that a lot, and this, but it's it's very key in comedy. Yeah, it, it's key for your comedic actor, uh, and it's key for your director because yep. the director has to ri- a yeah, director has to know when to say cut. Yeah, yeah. and whoever's and, shooting it needs to know how to shoot a comedy. Correct. Mm-hmm. And it looked really good. Yeah, and, good. And and again, I think I really enjoyed that this was in a house. Yeah. Like I, I enjoyed it because I mean, it, right, right, it harkens back to every time you go home. It's like, yeah, yeah sure. you know, and I just love that. I, even the shiva chairs, uh, <laughs> because you had to be. I mean, it already puts you back as being a kid. <laughs> yeah, because you're sitting in those damn chairs. Right. It's like you know, I, I, it's the environment that helped yeah. progress those characters back to who they were and mm-hmm. how they felt back when mm-hmm. you know they used to live. Because we all house. drop into our I roles. Think it was, right. ex- I think it was so. Uh, great in that aspect and also just the the lighting because overall it was a fairly well lit movie f- yeah. for a comedy 
And if it was drama, you'd think it'd be, there'd be some moments moody. where it'd be dark and moody. But the whole con- movie was consistently pretty well lit. And it mm. felt like and, more of a comedy than that. Aspect. And it's funny because Terry Stacey, who's the cinematographer, when you're looking at his filmography, yeah. you know, 50-50, P.S. Yeah. I Love You, Great. Adventureland, mm-hmm. American Splendor. He did independent movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and it, 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 it I felt like, it, but it had that look. Yeah, absolutely. Movies. But it worked in this case because it 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 it, it lent a, a bit of a realism yes. to the to the craziness that's mm-hmm. going along. It looked um, very practical in the sense of right. we're using practical light. It looked just yeah. like you were there. Yeah, the only thing, too. and again, the only thing that they didn't throw in is that it took place during Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's yeah. kind of what I was thinking. Of course it's, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that the, and, and, and actually, Sean, Sean, Sean Levy has, has, has mentioned that, you know, it was this funeral process. This is our, this is how our Jason Bateman character, mm-hmm. like, this is how he heals. Mm-hmm. It is by going back home. Yeah. And he's able and to also get, bond. Having him with, right. shoved in the basement. So he has time, you know, he's everybody, everything's happening above him, so to speak. And I just, I love that they, that, I don't know if that was the book or not or where that came to be, but I love that they shoved him in the basement because, <laughs> you know, talk about being the lowest point in your life. You have no job, you have no life. And then now you're in the basement, it, you can't put the bed down. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. That's where we like are. That That's where now. we're starting and it can only get better. Am and I right? That's how he kept just trying to open in the bed, yeah. you know, just for <laughs> coming. Couldn't. Like, nope, it's not going. But am I right? Right, it was Catherine Hahn was right. also in Bad Words. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes, yes. So I would have died if mm-hmm. at one point when she was in Bad Words, she was yeah. like, "Well, just don't look at me." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have died. I would have yeah. thought that that was yeah. hysterical. Ridiculous. Because it was, it was actually, it was like, oh, they're back together yes, again. I was yeah. like, oh, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. I buy that. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I like that. And, and even with her, like her as an actress, <clears throat> every single role that she plays, it's the always crazy. <laughs> Out of, really mm-hmm. out there and then seeing her mm-hmm. in this film I was surprised I mean it was great another yeah, she, funny she character she wasn't the craziest <laughs> yeah but then like because when they introduced her she's like okay she's actually a normal yeah. wife and yeah. then to have that scene I was like okay yep yeah, there's the crazy scene yeah. that's Getting probably why she's this and, character and, yeah. and, yeah. and you mentioned Connie Britton mm-hmm. uh, earlier, who, who again I didn't I didn't I didn't know she was uh, I don't recall her in the, in the trailer or the TV mm. campaign. Mm. Oh, I knew. However, great you know, job on Friday Night Live. Yeah, and for her, yeah. she was Nashville. like, you know, her, her, her. Um, I remember her from first season of American Horror Story. American Horror, mm-hmm. yeah. She's um, great in West Wing. Yeah, way back when. So, yeah. but you know, and again, you know, when asked about what was your favorite scene, she goes, "Oh, it was a scene that wasn't made, that wasn't put in the movie." She oh, goes, "We shit. actually had a sex scene." Uh, she and Adam, they, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and and she said that was her favorite part. So now I'm like, that well, if that's fun. your favorite part, I'm like, I wanted to. I mean. Yeah. I'm I want to see how have to wait for the deleted and, scenes, yeah. or how many other scenes got cut. I wonder if it had anything to do with some sort of mommy reference or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, tell uh, me about your problems. Exactly. It's, you know, the therapist. It's like, oh, that was just so odd. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know, and, and and you know, you sort of wished. You know, I got the 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 sense that the Adam Driver character, I forget his name right now, um, Philip. that Philip. Uh, Philip. I had the sense that Philip was starting to mature a little. Yeah, finally. I mean, well, mm-hmm. right? Am I like? Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. A, no, he was well, on the like, cusp I, of actually being a man. Yeah, he, I yeah. got the notion that he was, you know, he was maturing, and because during Fighting the whole the scene way. when they're talking about exactly. the business, he was like, "No, if he did X, Y, and Z," mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay, he has business chops. He could a little be, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah." So, or at least he knows he, what to say. Yeah, I mean, he I don't could be he successful in that way. Yeah, because like there was that whole thing with Corey Stahl as he's walking with Paul and. Paul and Judd were walking. He goes, "Well, I, 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 I hired Philip." And he goes, yeah. "Yeah." He goes, "How long do you think that's gonna last?" He goes, mm-hmm. "Oh, it's not." And I was like mm-hmm. thinking, you know, though, it might. Mm-hmm. And I was all, I was all, I be honest, for one fleeting moment, I was thinking, you know what, Jason Bateman's gonna stick around and mm-hmm. he's gonna right. help out with the family business, and mm-hmm. then that way he can be with Rose Byrne. And why wouldn't True. that happen in this? But again, <laughs> that but that goes to the earth because the whole arc about him is that everything was too safe. That's the safe route is to go home, have this family surround you, support you, help you, and that's way sure. too safe for him. And if he's gonna have an arc, you can't do that. Okay, because he's trying to. But the other thing I was interested to talk about because we were mentioning Philip is that when he's sitting there in the car and he's saying, "Don't get out of the car, don't get out of the car," and of course you know later because his shirt's inside out, he got out of the car. <laughs> so 
and that's a lot, that's very good because he's a guy that's not ready to change. He's right. not interested, and in he, he knows he should. He, he wants to, but nah, he's, he's not gonna. Yeah, and I always and again though, even coming towards the end, mm-hmm. he sort of. I actually call me silly, but mm-hmm. I actually did believe that he liked Tracy. Uh, the the Connie Britton character. Yeah, I, think I, I did. really think that. Yeah, and and I think with her leaving, mm-hmm. I think that really I do think that that affected him, mm-hmm. and that could have been one of his like things going. Yeah, I gotta I, I gotta catalyst. become a, a catalyst. I gotta, right. I gotta do something. I can't you. keep doing this. I can't keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And you know, and and I sort of kind of think if we were ever to revisit that, maybe mm-hmm. that maybe that business would be okay. Maybe he yeah. and Corey Saul would get would get together. Well, you know, what's interesting is they, they painted it enough to, to, to allow us to believe that they could overcome this stuff because they were able to overcome all the n- nonsense that they yeah. was thrown at them. But th- there is the possibility that these two brothers could actually work together and that they could make something yeah, uh, successful here. And I also like, again, even though it was cliche, but the scene with, with um, uh, Philip, uh, with, with Judd and with Paul, when they were getting high in the classroom yeah. mm-hmm. and there was a line where like Paul's like, he was, Oh, I used to be so much fun. <laughs> and, and, and Jason Bateman's like, just like, yeah. I got this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's like, you were never fun. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> so, um, and Oh, and the actor that played, I, I just call him boner. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> that ben guy Schwartz. was, yeah. Ben Schwartz, Rabbi yeah. Charles Gordner, AKA boner. Mm-hmm. He was really funny too. I don't, I don't know. I don't go to he, temple believe, often, but I don't see a rabbi being no. Oh my god! Like when he was in the temple, it was so ridiculous. <laughs> like, what is he doing? Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. It, but I, l- I really liked his character and just his one joke. You know, boner. The the mm-hmm. fact that you think uh, we as an audience member would get tired of that joke, but the fact that everyone, even the Jesus mother, god, called god. him boner, it, it still was funny every single and, time they called him. That. And it was funny because again, they 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 spread it out mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and it was his reaction and it was like the slow burn like oh, don't call me that don't call me that oh don't call me that and each time he would get a little bit louder and then when finally jane fonda he goes oh you too <laughs> it's like it, yes okay, yeah. it's funny and even when hori does it. by the way one of the funniest moments for me was when hori after it's revealed that uh um let me get the character's name jane, uh, jane fonda's character miss hillary okay has a lover <laughs> The lesbian lover, and then Horny goes, "Oh, you guys didn't." Oh yeah, that. yeah. You guys, none you of guys, you knew that, huh? You guys didn't get to that. <laughs> he had the <laughs> one up. Yeah, it was a great line coming from him. I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Of course he knew. <laughs> and and again, you know, just again, I get yes. he he was in the car with Tina Fey that they mm-hmm. had the accident, and you know, yep. but again, yep. I saw their relationship, mm-hmm. and I but liked it, it more but, than. What well, she had? Oh yeah, but and, but and, also and you know that you it had. hurt her deep. And you know, that, I thought what was great about it was that everything in her life obviously changed at that moment, and that whole possibility was gone for her. So you know, they were saying, "Why is she with Barry?" I go, "She's with Barry because the person she really should be with can't is no longer." Right. Yeah. So she, I mean, it, I understood that it made sense. Right. I didn't, you know, whatever. And I just thought it worked. This is the scene with Tina. Th- Tina Fey, her as an actress, I was like, she could be a really good dramatic yes. actress. And I was like, she, because we know her so much for comedy, I was like, she could really do mm-hmm. drama. It's always easier because to go from comedy to I, drama. It, it, it depends but, on, that's debatable. Yeah, I was but, thinking about, well, not to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was thinking about Robin Williams because mm-hmm. we did our tribute to him and everything. And and again, he was a he's a guy that came from comedy. Mm-hmm. And well, he, he studied stu- at Juilliard, so I mean, he, he, mm-hmm. he and, had his dramatic chops. But a lot we we know him from like a lot of stand up routine sure, yeah. I mean, and all this, and yeah. he was able to again. You're, I, I sort of tend to agree with with where you're going with the comedy to drama because if you have the comedic timing and the mm-hmm. sensibility, even if it's a drama, even if it's a heavy drama, mm-hmm. there's going to be some period in which there's going to be a light laugh, even mm-hmm. if it's the heavy. You know, there's going to be some type of a bonding scene that might lighten up the movie a little bit, and I think. Tina Fey can handle that. I think Jason Bateman can handle that. And, you know, it, 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 it shows to their strengths, I think. And again, I think it's in part why they were able to elevate this movie and why an audience can go along with it. Because they didn't overplay it for the comedy. They didn't overplay it for the drama. You know, they didn't tear up the scenery. They were just right. 
I think it, it was so, it felt so real. It did. Like, these are real emotions <clears throat> that if anyone did have, go through a traumatic experience like that and did leave the the love of your life, mm -hmm. they would feel that yeah. way. And I I was emotionally, you know, a little bit distraught, we like, watching that. I was like, oh, I really felt for her. Mm -hmm. Same for, here. You're talking about for, yeah, uh, for, for Tina, Tina Fey, yeah. for yeah. Wendy. Yeah. 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 yeah, that, that was really heart-wrenching, actually, to yeah. think, yeah. To, to see him and to know what could have been. That's terrible. I like the scene where, you know, are you angry with me? And he's like, yeah. how can I ever be angry with you? And, mm -hmm. it, and it wasn't because he forgot. It was, mm -hmm. I can't be angry with you. And, you know, I liked how he called her uh, Sunflower. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, Sunflower. And again, I think Timothy Oliphant brings something to the role. I've been a fan of his since Go. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's such a good actor and that he too can handle some comedy and some drama and he can be in action. And of mm -hmm. course, he's in Justified. Mm -hmm. But he has a he has this casualness about it. He has this gait, the way he walks. There's there's something about him that I find very charismatic whenever he's on screen, uh, even when he's say slow uh, mm -hmm. in, in this movie. I mm -hmm. was very happy to see his name in the credits, and it, it actually made me want to watch this movie more. And I was waiting for him to show up, and I was like, okay, this is a little bit different for him. Yeah. So, um, especially you know. from Justified. <laughs> oh, absolutely, oh, absolutely. And then you know we didn't talk about uh, music. The other pleasant Please, surprise for me was uh, one of my favorites. You know, I love my soundtracks. Mm -hmm. Michael Giacchino uh, here, who most re recently has done the Star Trek movies with J.J. Abrams. Mm -hmm. He's done Lost. Uh, you know, he's done Ratatouille and, and Up, and yeah. you know, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes uh, that we talked about. I mean, this guy has. Yeah. A resume, mm -hmm. and I, I wouldn't without have seeing that his name in the yeah, credits, exactly. I wouldn't have guessed that this no. was Michael no. G Giacchino. I thought it was uh, the score was just played mm -hmm. perfectly. It didn't. I didn't find that it was overly schmaltzy or overtook a scene. No, I didn't think so me. either. So, uh, and I think uh, Marissa has already said. I don't know if it was in podcast or earlier, but uh, I think she likes the uh, Cindy Lauper touch too. <laughs> yeah. The Cindy Lauper Cindy touch, yeah. That, that that was. I like the scenes in the skating rink. Yeah. When, but to bring you back to the 80s mm -hmm. ni or 90s, I mean, that's, I mean, that's that's how they were supposed to be. You know, mm -hmm. they re regressed back to that time yeah. period. So it makes sense that that would be their their song. <laughs> yeah. Quote, and unquote. Funny. So, she has, you know how to skate, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've been on this before. Whack. <laughs> and he falls back and she comes out and lays down next to him. And mm -hmm. I, I thought that the scenes that they had together, I thought were touching. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted them. To be together. Sure, yeah, I think you that's know, what was really, why it was successful because yeah. you want them to be together, yeah. and it's great that they aren't. They don't. Yeah. They're not. In, they don't end up together. We don't know what's going to happen six months, but yeah, I'm not. trying to be like I was trying to like be. I, I felt that that conver the last conversation mm -hmm. that they had, right? That, because he he did flat out say he's like, look, I really like you. I don't know where this is going, mm -hmm. you know, but I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was just thinking, well, I know you got to do this, but, but it doesn't can, mean you can't exactly, pick up a phone exactly. and call and you can't take her out to dinner mm -hmm. every now and then and, and build on that relationship. And she, there was one part where I felt she should have been a little bit more understanding, like about like the kid and all. Right. You know, she got really pissed at him. Because he was, went to the. Well, yeah. And yeah. I was like. You gotta no, cut I mean, him a was, She was conflicted like, about it because yeah. she know, no, you really have to go. She, yeah. That part of it, but I, I, what I liked about the ending was that uh, he was aware enough to know that, it, the, and he, they even said it. I can't remember what the lines were. They basically this was not the best uh, way for us to be in a relationship because right. of everything that's happening. You can't really start right. a relationship in that, yeah, after, under that which is process, great. Yeah. That side go well. There's look at that arc because he's aware enough to realize I need to be alone here to clear my head to mm -hmm. really be uh, away from all this yeah. or at least to uh, assimilate it before I start just jumping in yeah. to another relationship with somebody yeah. else because I don't want to screw up that one like I missed with this one. Right. So yeah. for that part of it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. uh. Like I said, for me, characters, characters acting really elevated this movie, mm -hmm. made it enjoyable. I laughed. Yeah. I, I have to say, so my, the audience I was with laughed a lot. Same here. Laughed a lot. Same here. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Cause, yeah. Uh, and not just, hey, hey, isn't that funny? They laugh out loud funny mm -hmm. where you can't hear the next line because they're still laughing. That's, yeah. what, that's what happened in my I, audience. Yeah. I think the moment where everyone just like rocks just laugh was when yeah. the, the little boy threw the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was hysterical. I yeah, mean, anyone would I had a number of laughs where I was just Yeah, saying, same wow, here. Same here. You know, and where I was going, Jeez, I'm looking around going, wow, they, people are really yeah. enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, was it crowded, crowded? When no, you... I mean, it, uh, I, it was half. 
Yeah, I would say when I started, it was about half as well. Yeah, I was full. And but and yeah. very, very, I always go into full audience. Well, good for <laughs> so, you. Yeah. But but um, a wide range of ages. It was it was it was you know mixed gender. I mean half and uh -huh. half. Yeah. But I saw uh, very you know twenty year olds. I also saw sixty year olds. So yeah. it was interesting. That yeah. It was a wide range. There were no teenagers. That's all I can say well, yeah, in, I in, in that. the audience yeah. that I went to. So. But it was, I was, it was mostly in the adult demographic because, sure. you know, it, I, if I believe it's rated R, so yeah. you would get the older people. And, you know, just going back to Jason Bateman and Tina Fey, they bring the older demographic uh -huh. into mm -hmm. this type of film so that makes then when sense. we say older anything over 25 i think is yeah <laughs> i mean i mean if you went with the a team with mal and ackerman yeah. and all the, and leslie man you would you would bring the 20 30 year olds but i don't think you would get the older generation mm -hmm. true and i think tina fey and jason bateman's their range yeah. because of mm -hmm. snl because of 30 rock they can get the the Arrested 40s 50s 60s mm -hmm. yeah, yeah all, all of them yeah i agree with you i i, I agree with you a hundred percent and and again i, I just go back I, I you know not to be overly repetitive i really think that they helped i think with that that a cast that was originally mm -hmm. brought on board i think the movie would have had a different feel and rhythm to it Clearly. and yeah. this rhythm you know with the let's call it the b team that ended up being on screen mm -hmm. I don't see anybody doing any better than they did, and that's no disrespect to anybody. I just think that the rhythm that they had together, the camaraderie, yeah, I thought, I, they I played, thought it really worked. They played wow. their reality, and you know, even though I, as an audience, I wasn't looking at it as a reality, mm -hmm. but they played their. It was steeped in. You guys were saying it felt real. No, yeah, not, yeah, I it, it, it looked really good. And I like the small town feel, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah. Oh, I know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, small yeah. town having <laughs> having your family in one roof. <laughs> for a long amount of time I, I personally know what that's like because mm -hmm. like I grew up with my siblings we all literally lived yep. on the same block mm -hmm. so we were constantly wow. in the same location yeah. so I, I know what that so watching this family it, it hit home to me because like yeah. yeah real families are like this when you put yeah. them together mm -hmm. under one roof right yeah every all your emotions are going to be come out and you're going to regress back to that younger state mm -hmm. um, yeah that's what I loved about it all right. Well, uh, what else? Anything else we, before we get to last thoughts? I think like, we've yeah, covered. Okay, yeah, we covered a lot of the tech we and uh, yeah. the writing. Yeah, we'll uh, which we thought was good. Yeah, this, was, uh, this is his first screenplay, is it not? I believe so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and he's obviously written uh, yeah. numerous novels. Uh, I thought he handled it well. Again, I haven't read the script, so I don't know. I'm sorry, not I haven't read the, the book. book, so I don't know what, uh, what, what uh, how much work he had to go into that. It mm -hmm. makes me want to read the book, but uh, the, I thought the dialogue was snappy and a lot of fun. Yeah. And you know to to get those brothers and sisters bickering and 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 you know jibing at each other like that and still sh showing that they care and I thought that's a, that's a, not always an easy thing to come across and I thought that he, that he handled that part of it very well. Yeah, I, I do too. They I did mean, say things like that reminded me. Yeah, those yeah. brothers. Yeah, that's how uh -huh. brothers talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and reigning in the you know and again reigning in the chaos you mm -hmm. know from from Sean Levy's mm -hmm. point of view. Um, bringing it together so there was there was somewhat tight and you know being able to rein everything in and, and pick and choose so that <clears throat> there's nothing that's confusing mm -hmm. and then everything does as uh, Chloe had said button up nicely at the end and so that we buy it mm -hmm. so yeah it was good you know for the people that are watching uh, yeah. you know hopefully they had the same experience we did uh, mm -hmm. then maybe they liked it more liked it less but they they should let who us know who knows whether or not they're part of the critics who don't like it I, you know, <laughs> I, I was surprised by the critics you know, but I'm not too surprised in the sense that it seems like critics hate everything you know because every time I look at how can you know they're but but, 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 but they, again I'm not gonna I, for me I'm not gonna f listen if it was a 15% right movie mm -hmm. I'd be okay you went in with a hatchet yeah, because I, you went in hating I, this an movie an agenda already yeah. a 40 yeah. Like Monuments Men when they had a 35. I was like, what? right. What are you, what are you so upset with Monuments <clears throat> and, and this one, I go with a 43%. I'm yeah, like no. going uh, 7% seven, seven away from 50. That's almost the split. Yeah. I'm like, they didn't. Yeah, but your audience actually said 43, like but your audience is in the 70s. And I'm going, Be, yeah. really? I mean, because usually there's a 20, 20 difference. That's 20. been happening a lot this, and now this past getting, summer. You know, 30, almost 40? Yeah. I'm it's going, been happening geez, a lot. What's this going summer. on there? That's a big difference. Yeah. So. I you was know. kind of, sh it's like, what, what are they so upset about? I didn't, uh, you know, uh, one of the, I only read two or three reviews. One of them said that, you know, with this ensemble cast, you would expect more rather than a p the pedestrian results or something like that. And I went, 
Uh, well, first of all, well, I don't know why you're going and expecting anything. You should just how let the movie come to you. Well, that's just my own philosophy. But why not just let the movie come to you rather than have an expectation of what it should be? Because then you're not in the movie that you're watching. You're in you're watching the movie you want to see mm-hmm. or hoping to see something right. else. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? Yeah, no, I mean, I I don't know. I, again, I read the similar reviews that yeah. you did, and you know, cast can't overcome this or mm-hmm. whatever. I am on the flip side. Yeah, I think the there. cast really overcame that. And I think it's a great example mm-hmm. of how something that they took something that I thought was mediocre, right. but they yeah, elevated it. Let me just it ask you this, it, just a little bit about yeah. that, because uh, did you like the stuff that that bothered you most was just that, okay, all the stuff he's throwing in. And, the and, the contrivances, in of contrivances, some of the coincidences, did, the but, lesbianism but you, at the end. Yeah, but like were you okay romance? about the dialogue and, and the relationships and stuff like that? Did I that was, work for you? Yeah, but it, it worked for me because I bought the people you who were delivering. You bought the relationship between Yeah, the, yeah I bought I the people it. who were delivering the okay. dialogue. Yeah. I, I thought that the performances were Great. good. Okay. I thought they elevated the material. I can absolutely And had it been the other team that had done this, I'm not sure I would have felt the same way. I enjoyed watching Jason Bateman and Dina Fey, mm-hmm. uh, Corey Stahl. I, I enjoyed uh, Rose Byrne, Timothy mm-hmm. Oliphant, Jane Fonda. They each had their day in the sun. They they didn't overplay it and or mm-hmm. underplay it. And it didn't become, it was the way that it didn't become too maudlin for me. Mm-hmm. So I was able to rise above it because I laughed. Right. Um, I fi- And as I, as I said at the beginning, I did find the movie had its charm. Mm-hmm. And all those things to me added up to outweigh whatever negative mm-hmm. I could have thought about. I was like, when I when I was done with the movie, I ultimately enjoyed it. I, I was entertained. Mm-hmm. And so I could, it's 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 misforgivings or, All right. I could forgive. And Marissa, you, you, are, you would recommend this, correct? <clears throat> you would I would say, recommend this. Yeah. I would tell my whole family to go watch this. Mm-hmm. And if you like that fun family dysfunctional dynamic, <laughs> this is definitely a good movie that you can laugh at, mm-hmm. but then still at the end feel like, yeah, that was a real family. I can completely relate to that, and that's why I think. And the great thing about it, they it can touch upon so many different age ranges. You don't, I mean, you could be a younger teenager and but still find this movie mm-hmm. funny, and an older adult and find this movie funny. So I think it really I just did speaks to a lot yeah. of different people. And just you're just I, basically saying, just go, but know that there might be some conveniences, right. some contrivances yeah. that may not. Yeah. But just run with but, it and have a good time. I recommended it to a friend of the show's who's yeah. actually been here, Cammy. Oh, nice. I had, yes, had lunch absolutely. with her yesterday, and she goes, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't been to the movies in such a long time. Mm-hmm. She goes, I'm thinking of seeing this. This. She goes, Have you seen anything? I said, You know, I saw this movie. Um, this is where I leave you. She goes, oh, I was supposed to go to a screening. Of that. I go, I think you would like that. That <laughs> seems to be. And I don't. And she goes, really? She goes, it looks good. And so I did recommend yeah. it. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have necessarily a problem mm-hmm. recommending it, you know, unless I knew that, you know, that, you know, male or female is just not into that kind of a movie. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think like I would t- might tell my mother to go see it or my dad. You know? I think there's plenty in this that people sure. can like. There's a lot of moments in it. There's a lot of fun in it. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think there's you, you'll recognize family <clears throat> members. You'll laugh at the, at the family members that you <laughs> think mm-hmm. about. And uh, it, yeah, I think yeah. go and have a good time. <laughs> yeah. The, and, and why don't you want to do that when you go to a movie? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so. Okay. Last thoughts, okay. anything? Nope, I nope, already got it. Right, Marissa. Yeah, I, I enjoy this film and I definitely recommend it. Okay, so there we go. By the way, Marissa, tell them where they can find us. Uh, you can follow all of us at anatomyofamovie.com and then also on Movie Talk Nation. And you can follow us on Twitter at Movie Anatomy. And definitely keep rating, keep commenting. We love reading everybody's thoughts about all of our dissections. And at Movie Talk Nation, we talk movies. Yes, we, we do. We talk, talk movies. movies. And here at Good. Anatomy of Movies, we dissect them. So thank you very much for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time. There you go. Live long and prosper. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the rest of the Anatomy of a Movie staff, we would like to thank you for listening and subscribing to the show. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email or tweet us. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been Anatomy of a Movie.